lives are we supposed to start the podcast one two three I mean, that was pretty good. That right out of the bat. A seasoned pro. I mean, a cold open, just nail it immediately. Before we start getting into everything we've had it with, I want to share with you, um, Kylie sent us a video that a woman sent to our Instagram. Yes. And she has a 13-year-old daughter, and the 13-year-old daughter was super stressed, had a lot of anxiety. Yes. And they started listening to our podcast together. And it helped this girl feel better that it was okay to be annoyed right. or get upset about something that not everything in your life has to be perfect. Right. Your appearance doesn't have to be perfect. Your feelings don't have to be perfect. And this mom is from Texas. You're going to know who you are. And I want to tell you how much your video meant to us. Very touched. Very much. So anyway, let's get to that. You know, the no perfection Pumps, what have you had it with this week? I've had it with you telling me that you and Tubby were the same age. <laughs> like it was a normal, <laughs> everyday conversation that it wasn't weird at all. I mean, you just looked at me so matter-of-factly. And you're like, well, I mean, Tubby and I are the same age in dog years. And I was just like, you're a fucking lunatic. Okay. <laughs> Tubby's seven. <laughs> Time seven is 49. Right. I'm 48. I just think if you're supposed to be my best friend, <laughs> which apparently I was mistaken, I should be able to tell you Tubby and I are the same age. Here's the deal. You, I get the dog years thing, but it was just like it was like we were just having a conversation. It was like, pass me the salt and pepper. Well, you have to remember that you don't like animals. And I do. <laughs> okay. So that is something that listener, if you're new, Pumps doesn't like dogs treats her dogs like they're subhuman parasites. I treat their I, I treat my dogs like they're dogs. I don't treat them like they're my children. Well, Tubby is my child. How can you be your child? You're the same age. And my companion. <laughs> my son, my boyfriend, he fills a lot of roles for me. And Multi. I'm sorry that you don't have this type of, you know, three multi-dimensional relationship <laughs> in your life. But what I'm hearing is bitter party of one. <laughs> Your table is now available. Right. But we know that if you had to get a table, it would be a party of two. Right. You and, and Tubby. And then I'd have to hear you <laughs> talk about nonstop about how anti-dog you are. and you think I'm not anti-dog. That's a lie. You keep interrupting me. It's because you're spewing nothing but bullshit. No, no. <laughs> I, your record, the permanent record, has reflected for many years now that you are not a great pet owner. I do think I had just, I had a valley, peaks and valleys. I'm in a peak with Blaze. I was in a peak with Bodie, which was my dog when I was young. Mm -hmm. But Scout, the Pomeranian and I, that was my valley. Right. He was just so obnoxious. Right. And he made Blaze more obnoxious. But Blaze is an angel now. The only thing, it's the hair. I can't take the hair. I just, I think that, you know... At the end of life, when we're in the assisted living center, right? Okay, if people were to come through and tell us how, how we performed as human beings, I'm going to get an A plus <laughs> as a pet owner. You're going to get a C minus. Okay, it's average at best. I would say minimum B minus. You go out of town and you just leave food and water for the dog. No, I have somebody go check on him, but he does stay outside. Right, and that's what I'm saying. That is C minus to D plus. At best. Okay. <laughs> when I go to town, my dogs have somebody that stays with them as a companion. Right. But we've already gone over. You think of your dogs as people. And I just assume that my dog is a I've dog. I've heard enough. <laughs> I've heard enough. I've heard enough of this abusive behavior towards animals. And I'm not going to tolerate it. And I want to move on to me <laughs> with the last word. I have had it with couples that communicate with each other online via Instagram posts, via Facebook posts, via tweets, via TikToks. And hang on, I've had it with these same people that overuse Man Crush Monday <laughs> and Woman Crush Wednesday. Ad nauseum. We get it. 
We fucking get it. But here's what you're not getting. You're throwing out red flags that in between these posts, we know there's a lot of fuckery going on. And I'm not talking about fucking. I'm talking about fuckery, toxic fuckery. I will have to give you 100% credit. When Facebook just came out, like it was new, and you would always say, pull up this person. She and her husband are communicating on Facebook, like, oh, you're so great. Oh, I love you. Thank you for last night. You would always say, that is the first sign they're getting divorced. And I think your track record is 10 out of 10. Like when people start communicating on Facebook, you always say they're getting ready to get a divorce. And to date, I've not known anybody that hasn't based on that uh, assessment. First of all, the listener and I would like to thank you for pointing out how right I am. (laughs) And let me just tell you, it is a burden being right all the time. It is a burden. It really is. But it's true. These people, it was like, I love my man or I'm cooking dinner for my man. And then the husband responds, I love my wifey so much. And I think that's a red flag, wifey. Well, yeah, probably. I do. That's just, I think it's wife. Okay. Okay. It's it's just wife. We don't need to go with wifey. And then it's like, my man does this and this and this for me. And I'm like, who are you who are you advertising this for? For each other. And then there's people that do the Woman Crush Wednesday. Every Wednesday. And these are couples that have been together a very long time. Right. And I just don't think I think it diminishes when you post it so much. It diminishes the entire relationship because I look at it as showboating (laughs) and grandstanding. Now, listener, there are times where it's my husband's birthday or a child's birthday and I want to do a sweet post. Even people with cold black hearts, such as myself, (laughs) have moments of kindness where I want to be effusive and really tell somebody that I love them. But I just think the people that are over the top If people are really, really, really in love, there is not this compulsion to describe it in painstaking detail every Monday and every Wednesday. And then the significant other comments, oh my God, baby, I love you so much. This is the best (laughs) thing ever. And I'm like, somebody is fucking around. A hundred percent. And they want the mistress and or the lover to see it. That's what this is. Or they're doing it. It's like a makeup for the mistress. Like, oh, no, I'm going to prove how much I love you and I'm going to post all this shit. And then the minute you walk out, I'm going to go sneak off and see my mistress. I just think anytime you have somebody advertising something too much. Right. You know that 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 it's a problem. I'll give you an example. One day I was driving down by the bombing memorial Mm -hmm. in Oklahoma City and I was making a turn. I wasn't going to the memorial, but I had a meeting downtown. And I was making a turn, a left turn. This woman in a Mercedes in front of me, she's making a left turn in front of me. All of a sudden, she stops mid-intersection, puts her car into reverse, and I am laying on my horn, like honking like crazy. (laughs) Stop, stop. And she just backs into me. (gasps) It's like 10 a.m., right? Well, she comes barreling out of her car. She comes over to me and she's like, oh my God, my husband owns a car dealership. I, your car is fine. Your car is completely fine. I go, well, I mean, I just got it. So let me just take a beat here. Let me check it. She's like, are you going to call the police? I was like, pump the brakes. Let me check my car really quickly. Right. And she goes, well, you know, you're the one that was going forward. <laughs> And I went, you stopped and put your car in reverse. I was completely stopped and you backed into me. And then she says, I am not a crazy bitch. <laughs> it's an advertisement that she's Which a crazy bitch. I immediately <laughs> knew this woman was beyond a crazy bitch. She was the craziest of crazy bitches on the planet. I mean, fucked up out of her mind, bitch. So, I mean, in tying that into these couples, I think if you have friends or if you are one of these people that are overtly advertising how in love with you are all too frequently on the internet, <laughs> it's a bad sign. You're probably going to be calling pumps attorney at law soon yes. to represent you in your divorce proceedings. I'll tell you another marker of a divorce is imminent is the renewing your vows. <laughs> I mean, that is like an advertisement that we will be divorced in five years, period. 
<laughs> I, I've never seen anything like it. So have you represented yes. a lot of couples? Like that have we done renewed vows. our vows three years ago and this is what happened. And I'm like, probably should have just gotten a divorce three years ago. So you've kind of collected that data. I've collected that data anecdotally, but let me ask you this. Is there ever in your divorce cases, like, do people whip out, like, on Facebook, on this date, he said this to me, or? I don't, I know I haven't had that. It's more like I hacked into his Facebook, and here's his direct messages kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's always, all this shit's going down in the DMs. Always in the DMs. There's a rap song going yeah. down in the DMs. Welcome to I've Had It Podcast. I'm Jennifer. I'm E-N-G. And we like to call her Pumps. Today, we have an incredibly special guest. She is the co-host of Mean Girl Pod. She is also a former employee of Jennifer Welch Designs, and she also made me the world's oldest bridesmaid about four years ago. <laughs> so welcome to I've Had It, Alex Bennett. Hi, Alex. Hi, you guys. It's so good to see you. You too. This is fun. It is fun. Listener, what you need to know is that Alex worked for me starting, what, 2016, 2015? Yeah, yeah 16. 2016 until around 2019. I hung on. She I really on. fizzled out. Like, <laughs> I didn't do a clean break. I remember the day I told you, I tried to tell you I was quitting. And then we were both like, well, I'm going to move to California, but I'm still going to work for you. Right. And it was a slow burnout. And you did do some work for her when with the... Crates getting delivered to the Hawaii house or something. <laughs> we really no. I it was like six months of like lingering, staying in place. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. But I think it's interesting that Alex was on the show with us. For so for all of you OG fans, right? Of Pumps and me, you will remember darling Alex on both Sweet Home Oklahoma and Sweet Home. She moves to LA and then she goes to New York and now she has a podcast. Pumps and I are still in Oklahoma, and now we have a podcast. Right. So it made perfect sense. We're all podcasters now. What <laughs> happened? Are. I never, if we you told are. me, where's everyone end up in three years, I'd be like, well, I don't know, but not here. This right, is not here. I wouldn't have thought this. This I don't is know. apparently where washed up reality stars go, <laughs> go to, to die. die. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Okay. I just have to make one point super clear. Do it. For the listener. Okay. Jennifer was the world's oldest bridesmaid mm -hmm. in Alex's wedding. I used to tease her mm -hmm. like I want a big chiffon, big, <laughs> big bell hoop, big sleeves. Yeah. No, I just got so much mileage out of that. She edited. I remember I said, because I was the bride. Right. And the bride gets to pick the bride's dresses for That's the right. bridesmaids. Mm -hmm. And I brought the dresses and I said, this is what everyone's wearing. And you're wearing this dress. <laughs> she said, I'm out. I'm not wearing that dress. <laughs> Pulled up the website, picked her own dress, changed three of the bridesmaids dresses and said, we're wearing that. And then goes, and you're welcome because the one you picked wouldn't look good. <laughs> So what I was a bitch. I was a, it's great. I was a bridesmaid Zilla, is yes, what I was. You were. So not only at the time was I 44, and I mean really <laughs> pushing what visually made sense, you know, when you picture people getting married, it visually didn't make sense, even though I looked fucking awesome. Okay. Yeah, right, right. But uh it visually kind of looked odd, like <laughs> what's this old is girl that... doing? I was a bridesmaid Zilla, and I remember it. She picks this wretched pastel pink mm -hmm. dress i order it as i'm supposed to right it comes in i put it on and i'm like oh hell no <laughs> no so i get on the same website and pick a different dress go ahead and order it because i figure at this point i'm going to ask forgiveness and not permission sometimes that's the best <laughs> that was the and it's so much better looking back at photos i'm like the pale pink would have been awful right you're welcome you kn you knew right off the bat i, was, I knew i <laughs> saved you because think about these pictures are aging so much better now they're timeless they're aging <laughs> they're like so me are, they are. <laughs> you, you look the exact same as you did then and it's true <laughs> You edited the dress. And I remember I was just sitting there and I knew I was like, I don't have an option. So I just said, okay, <laughs> okay. perfect. <laughs> it was, I was a total bridesmaid, Zilla. It's unbelievable what a nightmare of a bridesmaid I was. It was probably a power dynamic. You're so much older that you could con her into anything. Probably. And my probably. boss. <laughs> <laughs> my paid, literally yes. was paying me. Right. Yeah. So definitely it was a power dynamic mm -hmm. issue. So, Alex, what we like to do on this podcast is we oppose toxic positivity in all of its forms, okay? 
oppose. Oppose. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah we, okay. we oppose it. We don't think it's a sustainable activity to be positive all the time. Okay, 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 okay. You're setting yourself up for failure. Right. So what we like to get at is what, what our guests have had it with. Mm-hmm. So why don't you tell us what you've had it with? I think that you could run laps on me around it, and maybe you, I'm not sure. Okay. But it's, it's, English, it's the English language as a whole, but for a good reason. Because the other day, like, so we all do, we create content, right? Like, because you do a podcast. Right. But I don't think content was a word like 10 years ago. Maybe it was, but like, we weren't really talking about content how we do today. Right. Like, I constantly, I'm thinking about the word. And I was trying to tell one of my friends that I'm very content in Miami. So I was typing it and I was like, I'm very content in Miami. And I was like, no, I'm very content in Miami. So then I went to Google and I was like, how do you spell that you're content? But then it was like, how do you spell that you're content? I was like, no, I'm trying to say that I'm happy and I'm content content where I'm at. <laughs> and I was like, holy fuck. So I call my husband and I'm like, what's the difference between content and content? And he's like, let me Google it. And he's like, well, I don't fucking know. Are they the same thing? And I was like, I don't know. But like, how do you ask Google to spell the words differently when it's in maybe the same word, but you can't, ex- you can't spell it. You can't tell Google you want content versus content without saying content versus content. <laughs> And I was like, you've got, like, you have got to be joking me. So I call one of my friends that's really good with words. And I was like, is content and content the same word? She's like, yeah, it's this whole thing, but it is. Right. And I was like, well, that's, that to me was absurd. Then, so I started thinking about other things that were similar to that. And I'm like, imagine learning English and they're like, she'll, like she will. Right. Like she apostrophe LL. Right. And then you want to say like, she's a shell of a human being and they're the same exact thing, but there's one of those little lines, like that's what, that's what you have. I bet it's a minefield out there for you, Alexa. (laughs) I mean, I bet that shit, like I left my dog at home. I'm going to turn left at the stop sign. Right. Same word. You're right. But then you take a right at the building. Or I'm, God forbid you want to write. Right. I, this is a goddamn minefield. But here's my problem. What? You got one fucking language to learn. <laughs> well, I know, but I don't you like know, the one we you have. You got one. There are people out there. We suck as a country. <laughs> Do America I? sucks because we all only speak English. You get over to Europe, mm-hmm. people from the Netherlands and Belgium speak five to seven languages fluently and they're not hung up about content versus content but then it's like you've got one language and it's like w-o-n or o-n-e like i do know that one but it's like that's what we have you gotta nail it you gotta master it alex you have got to step up to the plate sis you have got to step up to the fucking plate and batter up on this thing maybe maybe you should try going to an english as a second language course right, or english for dummies <laughs> I, I am pretty good at it these days, but the, there's another one that I was trying to think of. Like the twos and the twos and the twos, I right, I, right. I, I understand the number needs to be different. Right. I think the, the TO and the TOO, we could loop together and it would be fine. But And I understand that there's different ones of those, but content and content being the same word, meaning two different things spelled the same? It's called a homonym. <laughs> oh, I didn't even know that existed. Yeah, it's a homonym. This the, the, we, we are taught this. In elementary school. So what I want to say here to you went to a a public school in the state of Oklahoma, right? Yeah. We, I think, are ranked 47th in education. (laughs) Now, so I want to say, Governor Kevin (laughs) Stead, listen no further (laughs) than I've had it podcast and quit fucking around with the drag queens and fund public education for Christ's sakes. No, I think it's important to get that (laughs) message out there because I'm 29. Right. And I didn't know that a homonym. You should have seen me and Graham Bennett trying to Google on the plane. What is the word? For words that sound similar to other words that are spelled the same but mean two different things. And we could have just Googled, can I have a list of homonyms? It, yeah, yeah. And I'm telling you, <laughs> they're abundant. Well, <laughs> let me tell the listener something about Alex that is probably one of my favorite qualities. I can tell you that when she worked for me, she was the first person at the office. She was the last person to leave. She would pick up trash. She would sweep a floor. She would do anything and everything. So, I mean, the best employee I've ever had and always with a smile. She was never in a shitty mood. She never took it out on anybody. And if she didn't know how to do something, she figured it out. She was a complete self-starter. And so this combination of being such a hard worker and so smart and a problem solver, but then being hung up 
and brain twisted <laughs> over content and content for people that know you it's charming and adorable but i think for the internet when they see a clip of this i imagine you probably get raked raked over the coals drug drug yeah but i've decided because i was i was forced with a choice of do you want to say it and have them drag you Right. Or do you want to be somebody different? Right. And I was like, I like me a lot better when I say it. Like, I don't know some of these things and that's okay. Right. right. And it's okay to talk about it. It's yeah. an honest conversation. Right. Yeah. It's okay to talk. It's okay to circle back to elementary school. Yeah. I, <laughs> I printed out a map the other day to see if I could do it, if I could label the states and like, couldn't even, I mean, I forgot that Georgia even existed and it just, I got reamed for it. And I was like, but you, I mean, like, could you, you maybe, could you label truly the Northeast? Could you do it? Vermont, all those up there? No. No I, way. I don't think I could. I could. I mean, I hate to. I mean, if I had it in front of <laughs> me and I could narrow it down like process of elimination, but if I was like on a clock or something, no. I could do it. And I definitely could not do like Europe, Asia, Africa, I all could. that. Okay. So Alex. Yes. You have a podcast that you co-host mm -hmm. at Barstool Sports mm -hmm. called Mean Girl. Correct. And then there was kind of a kerfuffle about your podcast, right? Yes. So like I kind of got the, the cliff note version for our listener is you and your girlfriend have a podcast about girl stuff. Yes. 20s, 30 something, navigating early adulthood. Correct. Would that be right? That would be right. And so then you had a coworker that got upset about this. So why don't you tell our listener and pumps and I are going to weigh in on this. So tell us, tell us kind of after that, what happened? So your coworker, what'd she do? Okay. So my coworker wrote a blog saying the mean girls have to be stopped. I think the most important thing is these clips crush because they make the internet feel some type of thing. We always say silence is feedback. If no one's saying anything about your podcast, the right. clips or anything, then you're not doing your job. Wait, I have a question. She said the mean girls need to be stopped. What does what needs to be stopped? What needs to be stopped is these clips that Barstool's choosing to post. Okay. So we record the episode for an hour. Our okay. producer clips 18 of them. Okay. And we send them all to okay. the main account guys. They go through them. A lot of them, I would say 18 of them have like a lot of substance and, you know, the Barstool world's not going to want them. Right. And then you've got these two. Right. And we're like, are dinosaurs real? Did you believe that, di did you for a moment, like suspend? <laughs> Do I think dinosaurs exist? Sure. I know there's been fossils that are found, okay, but like, okay. am I'm not, but I, I'm like, uh, great. I'm good either way. Okay. Right. So, so not this affecting you every day. And different. So this video, obviously, for obvious reasons, the optics of you, an attractive blonde girl <laughs> saying something ditzy yes. goes viral on the internet goes viral on the internet okay that that everyone was like that's hilarious that's funny and so the girl is like they need to be stopped well that that was the week before is the dinosaur clip okay and everyone's like what's going on with okay. that the week after that we're riffing on hand washing which everyone in our office does this hand washing clip where they're like we don't we don't always wash our hands then i said People didn't wash their hands back in the day, and they had far less diseases. I know that that is not true. Right. <laughs> I am fucking with everybody when I say that. Okay, right. okay, okay. I'm smart enough to know okay. if there was more. Does like uh, we can go down the whole thing. You don't when you're when you're on these mics, you're not a, you're just talking to the person. Right, right, right. So that clip goes out viral, viral, and I mean, you and know, then it, I'm sure a bunch of. Uh, hater aid in the comment section. I'm sure I've never read them, but yeah, yeah, yeah I'm sure it's just. But hey, you know what? Uh, I'm down for any type of comments. But you're like, okay, stat stat wise, this is a banger. People are it's driving traffic over to the pod. Did, Who's I, next? I didn't. I didn't even pick it, and it's just like I didn't even know the clip went up. These these hand washing dinosaur clips, I'm cracking my right. ass up at, okay. and I don't think a thing up. They don't okay. harm anybody. Okay, they come out. Our coworker writes this, just this blog. I actually haven't still read it, but I, cause I got to the third line. I'm just crying. Aww. I was, ba I was bawling. Does it hurt your feelings? I was sad. Yeah. I was like, wait, 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 hold on. Like we're just having fun. Did she talk to you about it or did, did she say nothing? Hey. So she never said, Hey Alex, I think your content is shit. Not one thing. It was she straight to the internet. Immediately to the internet. Right to the internet first. Okay. And I was like, Whoa, because she was saying like, we make all the girls there look bad. And I was like, that's hard to do. Like that, 
<laughs> so my, I'm sorry, my dino clips making us all look bad. <laughs> right. I, I'm good with that. If that's who's making me look bad, like I'd rather have a dumb friend than I would have a mean friend. That's for right. sure. All that hundred percent. I and so you know you have to check yourself though when when a hater comes, you have to say, and I sat there. And I you and you know me growing up. If somebody told me something, I would just like change as a person. Right. But when you're when you're forced between this is what content's taught me, pleasing everybody or saying I like who I am and I'm okay with what everyone thinks, and that that's what was going on inside of me was like she's are she saying we're an idiot and that we're affecting everybody bad and that we're dumb and all of these things. And then I was like gonna go to defend it, and I was like, well, that's just you can't defend who you are. Like right. that's just. That's just it. So the basis of it was so hurtful because it wasn't like she was saying, you guys are sluts talking about the sex stuff. Right. It was the thing that got it was just us being like silly. And I was like, I think the Internet could use a little bit more silly. Like, right. Our hearts were in the right place. Right. That's what hurt so bad about it. Well, my thing is, is number one, you should be flattered because that took a lot of energy. Right. On her part to put that much into it because I would probably guess does she have a podcast? Have you ever written an article about her podcast? Right. No. Right. I've never written one about a podcast. Well, maybe, maybe you can watch one. You can write neither. one about. I've had it. Oh, uh, there we go. I can, I, can write my, <laughs> I can write my first one. But I think that you know, for me, when I see something that I don't like or I see, some, I just simply move on. But my problem with the friend, what's the girl's name? Kelly. Kelly, is if I have a problem with a coworker. I'm going to tell the coworker, right, woman to woman. I think it's chicken shit to go straight to the internet. Whether people believe what she has to say, whether there's, you know, any veracity to any of her sayings, that's one thing. But if I had a problem with pumps or with Kylie or with Richard, I'm going to go directly to them. I'm not going to come sit down in this chair and surprise them with <laughs> right. an attack on the worldwide fucking web. It's chicken shit. Well, and then you're just, you just check your phone on a Monday at noon and you're like, what? Holy shit. So what's it like? Do you still see her? I, well, I saw her yesterday. We just made eye contact. She texted us and was like, if you guys want to talk. And it's just like, it's one of those things. Barstool is a place where you can do that. This was like, we were making all the women look bad. And then she was saying she was trying to help us. But if you're trying to help us, you, you talk to us. Right. You know what I would say if I saw her? You did your job. That's your job. That you, you're you allowed right. to do that. It it hurt me. Yeah. But I'm not mad. And I'm I'm thankful for it. I told Graham if, if we could do it again, I would do it again. Well, thank you for sharing. Well, thank With you for that, asking as, me. I mean, we are Team Alex. Thank always. you. And Kelly can fuck right on off. <laughs> well, I don't think there should be teams. <laughs> Let it be known. But that's what your friends do. Your that's friends right. stand up for you. You know, and I need I mean, that. You can be. You can take the high road. Pumps now take the low, low road. Fuck off, Kelly. Thank well, you. and I think <laughs> just one thing. <laughs> fuck off, Kelly. One thing that we haven't addressed yet, Jennifer, and I know you're going to be so excited is you and Alex have the connection of she worked with you. But Alex and I were in the same sorority. Oh my gosh, that's right. So we are sisters. You are sisters. <laughs> she says it's a cult. Do you think it's a cult, sororities? You know, looking back on it, I ha I do have an um, interesting thought. I don't think. Um, she was not near the hardcore sorority girl that you were because when she came to work for me, she never brought it up. I mean, you are like a nut about it cult mother so like when alex whenever you do get pregnant and mm -hmm. you have a daughter will your ambition for her be for her to be the president of a sorority house no but i think it's hard to say until i have her like well, i see she did in utero right no <laughs> it's, they said it's a girl and i immediately went there you said no it's not it's a kappa it's a kappa that's, a, that's, <laughs> oh my God, that's, that's a kappa right. in there yeah. yeah okay so we have a new game that we're gonna play with you and it is called had it or hit it oh my god welcome to had it or hit it i would hit it had it, had it. i hit it every day sometimes twice a day had it or hit it kanye west had it he's gotta go had it agree. Gotta go. Had it. Enough. Gotta go. Self tanner. Oh, oh, I would eat it if I could. Hit it. <laughs> Hit it. I saw some stuff on the internet about your orange hands. I love them. <laughs> I love them. I the orange. I put on blue the other day, and this girl helps me with my styling, and she said, oh, "That's that's our new color. It de oranges you." <laughs> <laughs> and then she was like, "I know you're taking that as a compliment." I was like, "I am absolutely Thank you. Yeah. okay." Influencing. 
Um, I you know what? I think a year ago I would have said had it, but I'm I'm in on it. You're hitting it. I'm hitting it. Hitting it. For me, it's like some of the influencing is too much. Mm -hmm. Like there was recently like a woman that's influencing and it's like school drop off look. And I'm like, if you are fucking planning out that's what you're wearing to drive your kids to school in carpool, it's too much. Well, I mean, you have bigger problems than what you're wearing to carpool. If that's like the focus of your life that you're going to like put it on the internet. It's just too much. It's just ridiculous. It's too much narcissism that you're sitting there thinking about what you're going to wear to drop off a preschooler. And that you think other parents give a flying fuck what you're wearing. Yeah. I would think that you wouldn't have the time. I don't know. I've never done drop off, but. You don't. Okay. You don't. You okay. Don't. Okay. Had it or hit it. Group texting. <gasps> hit it. <gasps> oh. I know you guys are. Are you guys very anti it? Are you very anti. had it? Yeah. Had it. Every group much. text that I'm in, I turn on the mute notifications because it's just, I mean, it's like an intercontinental ballistic missile going off right. in your fucking hands. You're just going crazy. Yeah. I, love I don't it. love it. I think it's like a party. I used to hate them because I couldn't keep up with them, but now I like them. Okay. <laughs> it's like a party. Had it or hit it. Unlightenism. I've had it. Overused. One more time. <laughs> Un Unlightenism. I don't know what it means. Un <laughs> We're just fucking with God you. God damn it. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> she has been, had that loaded up. So excited. I had it. to bring pups in on it. <laughs> I, Kylie and I made the word up this morning. I had to bring everybody in on it just to fuck with you. Because when you worked for me, I did this shit to you all the time. <laughs> you did it to me all the time. I'd be like, I don't know and what I we're doing about I knew the face that she would make <laughs> and you made it. <laughs> <laughs> Bub, she were incredible. Thank you were you. incredible. Quite the actress. Right out, you did it right out she of the gate. She did it. She did it. So oh God. God! It happened with toxic positivity at the beginning because I don't actually know what the term means. Right. But then and then and then on top of that, you said we're anti or something, and so I was like, holy shit! I don't know what side. <laughs> I don't know if we're for it or against it. But then you gave me the clues. <laughs> oh, Alex. <laughs> okay. Had it or hit it? Marital advice. <sighs> Well, I don't want to receive it, but I do find myself giving it. So, <laughs> <laughs> but don't tell me anything about mine. Right. I'll be like, shut the fuck up. So, uh, the, is there a middle? Oh, oh, a double standard. I'm, I'm totally I'm, hypocritical on it. We are too. Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, we're hypocritical pretty much about, about everything. everything in this podcast. Yeah. It's so not to be. Yeah. So marital advice, I would definitely say, fucking hit the bricks. I've right. had it. Uh, don't give it to me. But if you came to me, Alex, I mean, I've given you a shit ton of marital advice. I think you've given me the most valuable marital advice. Listen to that. Yeah. Oh, God. You just are feeding her ego. to that. Know, but it was so pivotal at the beginning. Well, well, it was. You know, I think that because... My marriage has been such an abject failure. Right. You know the <laughs> do's and don'ts. That's who I want the advice from, though. I've lived both you know, sides. Josh mm -hmm. and I have been very happily married. And I mean, God damn, we have been rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. Right. Miserable. Yes. And so I, I think that the people that say stuff like, we never go to bed angry. Oh, that's horseshit. I think they can fuck right on mm -hmm. off. Right. That yeah. is not sustainable. It's not sustainable. And just lead with kindness. No, sometimes I want to lead with I'm so pissed off and that's right. okay. Right. But the person that's going to give me the advice, though, I thought about this the other day because I was listening to a girl and she was like, the only reason I'm here is because I failed so many times and fucked up. And I was like, okay, so then you do know. Right. Right. It's relatable because right. nobody's got the perfect marriage. No. Despite no. what people like to put out there on their Instagram and stuff. Right. Totally. Right. I mean, it's hard. But living with anybody is hard. Oh, yes. And then I think with a marriage, you start off crazy in love, want to jump each other's bones all the time. Right. That kind of fades. And then you move in together. And then at some point you can look over at this person and the way they're breathing. Right. Just makes you want to go just crazy. Just right under your skin. And then four weeks later, you can be like, oh my God, I'm madly in love with this person again. It's right. like a total schizophrenic style thing. Yeah. Last night, Graham was snoring and he's never snored. <gasps> and I woke him up for, and then this morning I was mad at him. I was giving him the cold shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> and he came over and he said, I got to tell you the first thing about snoring is I can't control it. I don't know I'm doing it. And I was like, you're Do you right. remember right. when you traveled with me and we would share a room and I snored? Yes. And you recorded me? And I was oh. up all night. She was up all night, bless her heart. Who's worse, I Graham or Jennifer? Well, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> I've been married to Graham for four years and he hasn't snored once. And I spent one night in a hotel room with her and I was like, all right, have you, you know what she we're doing? She had it. 
Yeah, I had had She it. had had it. And she's, Alex is so sweet. She's like, okay, listen, <laughs> you were snoring. And, and she kind of gets it off her chest. And then I'm like, Alex, I'm so sorry. She's like, it's okay. Let's go have a great day. I mean, yeah, she's so positive. It's so great. Okay. Finally, Alexa, had it or hit it? Hand washing. Um, hit it. <laughs> Look at this. Hit ding, it. Ding, 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 ding. Look at, she's washing her hands, everybody. All you fucking haters, Alex is washing those orange hands of hers and you can fuck right on off. But you told me one time in an airport that hand sanitizer does more for you than washing your hands in an airport because there's so many germs in the airport bathroom. And I do abide by that rule. I Unless it's, you know, when you, if you have to touch like all the right. handles and all that, then it's like all the people that have touched it. Now, the touchless one. That's fine. That's fine. But yeah. If it's like you have to turn the faucet on and all that, I'm like, fuck this. I'm doing hand sanitizer. I don't want to get all the additional vaginal germs from mm. others on my hands. And the actual airplane bathroom, is the, that's the one. Oh, that's the worst. It's the worst. I mean, that's worst. disgusting. It's totally disgusting. I'm not even a germaphobe. Like, I don't ever even consider germs ever except in a plane bathroom. Yeah, same. It's awful. It, it's really bad. Alexa... It has been such a pleasure to have you in Oklahoma Thank City. Thank you. Thank you. And how fun for all of us that we have all Got to ended see. up in the gutter together <laughs> <laughs> making podcasts. Uh, you know, it's my it's our most asked when we do um, send in mean girl questions. Yeah. Everyone will be like, they'll send in how are Jennifer and pumps. And so Aww. one day back in December, my co-host Jordan, she didn't know anything about me. We didn't really know each other when we started. And she came up to me and she was like, was there like a reality show or something? <laughs> and I said, yeah. And she said, I had no idea. But people keep asking us that. And I was like, yep. Well, here, I, I mean, we've had people say like, Kylie will put on who, who, what guest you want to have on. And people say... Alex. Alex Bennett. And I always have called her from the day that I met her, Alexa Marie. So y'all <laughs> may know her as Alex Bennett, but to me, she will always be my sweet little Alexa Aww. Marie, who I adore so much. And we cannot thank you enough. Thanks, Alex. For joining cool. us on this podcast. Listen up, listener. You know what to do. You have to do all the shit. You have to like all the shit. You have to rate everything. You have to write the reviews. <laughs> like stuff just go off on the internet fucking go off <laughs> all right go off viral shit please also subscribe to us on patreon after we get 1 million subscribers <laughs> pumps will balance a wire hanger on her nipple only on i've had it patreon <laughs> pumps tell them when we're gonna see them we will see you next tuesday because that spells cut that's right bye listener <laughs> that's great Let's hear it.